falling time. So if we're doing a straight ahead animation of a, of a ball drop and our first key is at the apex, well, we'd um, like to know, uh, say, if we're shooting on twos, uh, two frames later, where would the ball be? Would it be here or further down? Probably not as far down as, as this last one. Uh, but maybe uh, a few frames later, it would be down here. So we want to have some idea as to how uh, quickly things fall. How much time does it take for something to fall? Well, uh, of course, in physics, we can calculate uh, these uh, times uh, given the acceleration of gravity. And here we have a, a table that shows uh, after the first few frames how far uh, something falls. Now, from the apex, after just one frame, the distance is is very small. It's only about a third of an inch, which is a little bit larger than the than the width of a pencil. So, uh, after two frames, the distance is about one and a third inches. Uh, of course, most animators don't have to be that um, precise. The idea is it's um, approximately the width of two fingers after uh, two frames. So that's the uh, the distance something falls from an apex after uh, two frames. And uh, we can look at a, a few more of these values. After after three inches, it's roughly the uh, width of um, your uh, fingers. After after four frames, uh, it's about the, the width of a, of a CD. Um, so these are probably some easy things you can you can remember if you want to have an idea how far something falls after the first few frames. So in um, a straight ahead uh, animation of a ball drop, if we were uh, shooting on twos and this first uh, key drawing was the uh, the apex, then two frames later the ball would be roughly here which is about the, the width of, of two fingers. Happens to be about a third of the diameter of this of this ball. Now, one thing which uh, is uh, actually convenient is that uh, the distance that an object falls does not depend on the object's weight as long as the force of air resistance is minimal. So if I release a, a baseball or a softball or a cricket ball uh, and something much heavier like a bowling ball from the same height, then the two of them uh, fall together. Uh, as long as uh, there isn't significant air resistance. For the first few frames of falling, that's almost always the case unless we're talking about something extremely light such as a, a feather or a leaf then uh, in that case the uh, there is significant air resistance compared to say the weight of a leaf and so this wouldn't exactly apply but uh, for uh, many many uh, objects at least for the first few um, frames the air resistance is minimal and, and these values apply. Now you can uh, use these results and this this other table, uh, which tells you the uh, how much time it takes for something to fall one inch, uh, two inches, uh, so on. Uh, and one example, you could uh, have a friend hold a ruler, uh, release it, and then you try to catch it. And usually, because of your reaction time, you'll catch the ruler after it's fallen between 8 to 12 inches because for most people that's their typical reaction time is about a, a quarter second. Uh, you should try that out. It's uh, interesting to measure your reaction time. Now, uh, I should mention that although you uh, might suspect that the fact that you have a reaction time that's something like a quarter of a second, that this would affect your um, 
measuring of time if you're planning a scene and using a stopwatch. But uh, you actually don't have to worry about this because uh, there's a reaction time in hitting the start button, but also a reaction time in hitting the stop button. So uh, about a quarter of a second delay of hitting start compensated by the quarter second delay of hitting stop. So uh, Now, uh, we can take the table of distance fallen and go for uh, longer times. And, and so you see this table here. And for example, the after one second, which is uh, 24 frames, the distance fallen from uh, apex, if there's negligible air resistance, is about uh, 16 feet. And you can compute uh, more values just using this formula. Uh, the distance in inches is the number of frames times the number of frames times a third of an inch. Uh, now, uh, a table like that uh, you can use, for example, for planning a scene. So it tells you right away that if you have a, a ball that is released from a height of about four feet, that it takes about 12 frames uh, to hit the ground if the uh, falling motion has a believable uh, realistic uh, timing. Uh, I should mention that uh, even though the spacings for falling motion are often done in a physically believable fashion, the actual the actual timing is is often uh, sped up a bit just to make the the, the action a little snappier. So uh, take these values as as a guide, but um, if it if the motion feels a little too sluggish for the action, uh, you uh, you should certainly um, vary that uh, according to what you need. So in summary, uh, neglecting air resistance, everything falls at the same rate, and the distance fallen from the apex after a few frames can be uh, looked up in that table that uh, was listed. Uh, after one frame, the distance is quite small. It's only about the width of a pencil. After two frames, the distance from the apex is about the width of um, two fingers. And uh, the table can be extended for even uh, larger uh, times and larger distances. And uh, that's useful for uh, planning a scene. So. Uh, now that's this is a starting guide. In the next few tutorials, we'll see even more useful uh, ways of creating believable falling without having to go to uh, this detail of making measurements about uh, actual distances. In other words, looking at the rhythm of the falling rather than the mechanics. So see you then.